about is health. And I believe we all should be, as God's remnant people, passionate about health. So this afternoon, we've got a beautiful team to accompany us. That's our Hub Chat team. Come on up, team. Um, they love it when I do these sorts of things, just put them on the spot. So we've got Estelle Edwards. This is Estelle. Estelle is a nurse. And we've got Carol Rampton. Carol is also a nurse. And we've got Cherie. Uh, Cherie is not a nurse. She's a physio and a massage therapist. So, and we've got Dr. Vinette, who will be here tomorrow, and she's a dentist. So this is our team, and we've been working together for over a year now. We've been doing lots of presentations. Uh, we go to local churches. We do weekly presentations at our church, our local church. We go around New Zealand to different churches and do presentations as well. If you need or would like us to come to your church, just get in contact with us and we can do that. We also run a medical missionary training and we did that late last year, about October last year, didn't we? And we're looking to do one this year, not sure when yet, but um, you'll see the information go out. And we're all called to be medical missionaries, aren't we? We're not called to be a missionary where we have to go overseas. We can be doing that in our backyard. So as I said, I'm Renee and I'm not a medical. Okay, so we can all be medical missionaries. I'm a teacher. And um, although I'm not teaching at the moment, oh, I am, I'm teaching my children. Um, but uh, I praise God that he has given this wonderful team and, and given us this great team that we can come and present this to you today. And so, as I said, we're going to be presenting about detox. And just before we get into it, um, I'm going to ask Carol if she can pray for us. And then we're going to get into our talk about detox. Maybe if you come up to here, Carol, just so that they can hear. If you'd like to bow your heads and close your eyes so we can invite God's Spirit with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to be here in this beautiful place that you have provided for us this day. Lord, we just ask that you will be with every head bowed here and those that will listen to this presentation. Lord, may the words that we speak be from you and may they be what um, the receivers need to hear at this time. Father, we do know that your coming is very soon and Lord, we look forward to that day with great anticipation that we all may be ready to meet you in the clouds of heaven, Father. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's have a look, see here. So, let's just point it in the right direction. So, this is, these are some of the YouTube videos that we have done from HubChat, and you can find us on um, YouTube, we've talked about specifically about detox, we've looked at reversing heart disease, uh, re reversing disease, whether that being diabetes, heart disease or cancer, that was an interview with Walt Cross, um, and I've also done an interview with Joyce Chair and Mercy Bollard as well, who you might know, they do a cookbook about autoimmune disease, so that's a, a great interview as well if you wanted to watch that. You know, as a, as a team, our mission, our focus and our mission is to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that's, that should be our mission for all of us, shouldn't it? We're called to be Jesus' hands and feet in this dying world. And this is what this presentation, we're doing three of them today, tomorrow and Friday. This is what these presentations about, are about. It's inspiring us and the message that God has given us uh, to, I guess you would say, come back to the basics and the simple message that God has given us in Ministry of Health and, and Councils on Diet and Food and in His Holy Bible, because it's all in the Bible. We don't need to look anywhere else, do we? No, it's all there. And so today we're going to be looking at some poultices, we're going to be talking about natural remedies, and we'll be doing demonstrations, we do food testing, we do all sorts of different things, because this is what it is about uh, learning about natural remedies. 
So there is a disclaimer, and I just want to say this presentation focuses on natural remedies with the intention of providing information about how you can heal yourself at home or your friends or your family by using God's pharmacy. And some people say, oh, Renee, you spelt pharmacy wrong. Yes, I know, I'm a teacher, I know that it's spelt wrong. But I believe we do this pharmacy because this is God's creation. Okay, we're not talking about pharmacia, we're not talking about pills and medicine, we're talking the natural pharmacy that God has given us in creation. So we advise you that if you've got symptoms that persist, go and see a GP or seek medical advice. So, detox. Let's have a look at it. Let's get into it. Now, detox is a popular buzzword. Would you agree with me? Yeah. What is detox to you? Okay, it's, a, it's an actual question. You can answer me back. What is detox? When you think of detox, why would you do a detox? Yep, gets rid of toxins from your body. Why else? Who would do a detox? Javan. You would do a detox, would you? Well, that's good. One of our younger members of the, of the audience. What, who, who would do a detox? Do, can anyone do a detox? Do, does it have to be specific people for specific purposes? No? No? When I used to think of the word detox, I would think of people who were recovering alcoholics or from drugs or maybe you've got a lifestyle disease and you do those rapid detox programs and life changes, you know, that sort of thing. Well, we're going to talk about this today. You know, the detox program that we're talking about, yes, there's a time and place for that, absolutely. But there's also detox programs that you can do at home. Simple, short-term interventions that get us back into alignment. Because it's about our bodies being in that state of homeostasis. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So when we're healthy, generally healthy, our bodies need to um, effectively remove the poisonouses out of our bodies. So we do so our um, organs it does that via our organs. Well, who knows the biggest organ of our body? Can anyone give me? Yes, skin. skin, absolutely. So we've got the liver, the, ki the kidneys, the gut, the skin, and the lungs. Um, this ensures optimal function and prevents disease. We have been so fearfully and wonderfully made. But what happens when our bodies are not eliminating toxins effectively? We get a toxic buildup in our bodies, which can lead to sickness and disease. This is when we generally do a, detoxis, a detoxification program. Okay, so have you ever considered the sort of chemicals that we are exposed to on a daily basis? Let's have a think about some of these, and we're going to go through some. What about home products, cleaning products, beauty products, air fresheners, detergents, clothes fabrics, fabric cleaners? What about preser uh, preserv preservatives, uh, artificial dyes, additives, um, flavouring agents, MSG, pesticides um, that's sprayed onto our plants, pollutants, GMO? Absolutely. What about the, um, the beauty and the hygiene products? Perfumes, fabric, uh, furniture fabrics, carpets. Have you ever considered about carpets? What about non-stick cookware? Plastic containers, plastic water bottles. What about our dirty electricity? Cell phones, radiation, 5G, the heavy metals, which is mercury, lead, arsenic, just to name a few. And the big one that we consume every day, our food. Now this has been, if I'm honest, this has been a really big learning journey for me for a while now. You know, the things that we eat my children hear me talk about this all the time. The processed food's not good for you. You know, our processed food. We know that this part of the supermarket is the biggest seller, but this is your processed food, isn't it? The tops and the bottom are the other types of foods. So your things like um, oils or sugars, wheat, eggs, 
even though eggs are very hard to come by now, aren't they? Interesting. Dairy, tea and coffee. All of these things build up in our body until there's this tipping point and our body says, I can't do this anymore. And this is when we start to see disease. Okay, what about headaches, fatigue, hair loss, brittle, brittle nails, bad breath, nausea, bloating, fluid retention, diarrhea, sugar cravings, weight gain, nasal and sinus congestion. Hey, who's had any of these? Has anyone had any of these problems before? Yeah, a few hands, oh, quite a few hands, lots of nods. Mm. That's right, to, to carry on muscle, joint aches and pains, gout, changes in body odour, acne, eczema, and sleep, sleep impairment. Toxic overload. This increases your risk to lifestyle diseases such as cancer, heart disease, diabetes, mm. and many other illnesses. You know, the pen of inspiration writes this beautiful quote, and I know that many of you um, know this, and it says this, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. So that's what disease is. It's a little bit different to what we traditionally think disease is. Now, over the next couple of days, we're going to go into this journey of what actually is disease. In the case of sickness, number one, the cause should be ascertained. Unhealthy conditions should be changed. Wrong habits, they're not continued. It says corrected. Wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to assist, then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel, expel impurities and to re-establish right conditions in the system. Now, let's have a look at this. Let's break this down. As a health team, we took, call this the four rules or the four basic steps of health. Number one, can you see that one there? I'm just going to push that backwards. There, yeah, can you see that better? Maybe Estelle, could you just pull, hold that back yeah, there? Sure. So we just... Okay, the first one, ascertain the cause. So we recognise that we have a problem and we go and find out what that problem is. Do we just continue with it though? No, the important thing is that we've actually got to remove it by changing those wrong conditions. Then we replace it with the good habits. So we then start putting in the good. And then it's time to repair, and this is when we assist nature. Hmm, so, where do we start? How do we implement these four R's? And that really is the big question, mm. isn't it? Where do we start? Anyone got any ideas? Where do we start? Prayer. Prayer, I love it. Yeah, we should be starting with prayer, absolutely. You know, we recommend um, that we do this program, a very simple program that is not revolutionary because it's God's eight laws of health. And we recommend that we are proactive rather than reactive. Have a think about that for a moment. Proactive rather than reactive. Don't wait until you're sick and then go, oh, I need to do something. No, do it now. Okay, now's the time to make sure that our bodies are in optimal health. Why should we be making sure that our bodies are in optimal health? Because our body is the temple. Do we believe Jesus is coming soon? Amen. Amen. Are the signs in this world pointing the fact that Jesus is coming soon? Yes. Absolutely. Is there a time coming that we won't be able to buy and sell? Yes. Yeah. Do you believe that time is soon? Yes. I believe that time is soon. In fact, I'm going to go one step further and say, I believe that time is very soon. Yes. So if we can't buy and sell, and we can't go to the doctors, we can't go and get conventional medicine and pop a pill, in fact, we won't be able to go and buy natural remedies. Firstly, we're going to need to be growing it. Or firstly, we need to know what it is and how to use it. Then we're going to need to start growing this. And we're going to talk more about the therapeutic bill tomorrow. So watch this space. We all know about this bill that's coming into New Zealand to stop natural remedies. So we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more tomorrow. Okay, so there are many, many different detox programs. 
we're going to talk about elements of a detox program that God recommends. Mm. It doesn't have to be complicated at all. It is based on the wonderful insight that we have. Who has mm. got this book? Ministry of Healing. Amazing. Who has read the book? It's easy to go in the shelf, eh? but we actually have to get out and read it. Um, so um, Ellen G. White talks about the eight basic health principles. So let's all read it together. Um, let's go. One, two. Pure, Pure air, air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. Every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to work them. So is that time that we need to be learning all that stuff and how to use it and what to do? Now is the time, isn't it? God's given us this extra time to try and get hold of them and learn them. Amen. So this is commonly known as New Start. You've probably heard that before, the New Start. No, let's just try that one again. It's disappeared on me. Ah, there it is. It's there somewhere. New Start. So, New Start, uh, we're going to talk about this. It stands for, does anyone know what it stands for? Nutrition? Exercise, it's up there, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest and trust in God. It's also known as God's plan. It's also known as God's answer. And I know that Sam, as she walks in the door, Sam has come up with a great ac acronym as well for taste and see, haven't you, Sam? Praise oh, praise <laughs> the Lord for that. Now, we are going to look at only three aspects today of the New Start program. Okay, we don't have time to go into eight, and in fact, we don't have time to go into depth. We're only going to give a little gloss over today. And firstly, we're going to talk about nutrition. And Cherie's going to come up and share a little bit about nutrition. In the Garden of Eden, God provided the best diet for us. This diet was plant food, foods eaten raw. Seeds, fruit, nuts are perfectly packaged bundles of all the protein, fibre, enzymes, antioxidants, nutrients, in fact everything we need to thrive. About 75% of, of our food should be eaten raw. Is there anyone who can say that they do? Put your hand up. Mm. <laughs> During the summer months, it's much easier, isn't it, when there's lots of fresh produce. A little over a year ago, I set up a new veggie garden. Why? For 30 years, I had been wandering in a rather pleasant wilderness, raising our family, enjoying a rewarding career in healthcare, but without Jesus. But I had been noticing changes in health, in education, in financial and political systems. I recognise that coercion and mandates, pestilence, food shortages and lockdowns really meant something about the time that we are living in. I recognise words and phrases used in the media that seem to have come straight from the Bible or spirit of prophecy. I was shocked to hear our Prime Minister say that they were our one source of truth. I remember the chapter in, in Great Controversy called Liberty of Conscience. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord for Christian, I, I get a bit tearful, sorry. Praise the Lord for Christian parents in Adventist times. Mm -hmm. Because I remembered these things. And praise the Lord for the health message too, because I was raised in a um, family where we, where we lived this message. A little more than a year ago, God woke me up. He woke me up and he said, Jesus is coming very, very soon. In fact, at that moment, I thought Jesus was coming so soon that my garden may not have time to be productive. So while my garden was growing, I studied and prayed and renewed my relationship with Jesus. I also began an instant garden on my kitchen bench. I discovered I can grow and eat live food in about 24 hours by soaking and sprouting. Today, I'm going to share a very simple recipe that will be familiar to many. 
However, hummus made raw with sprouted chickpeas is much easier to digest, more nutritious, healthy live food, and I believe more delicious. So this is sprouted chickpea hummus. Excuse me for a second. Sorry, my children say I've got leaky pipes. <laughs> To begin with, chickpeas are legumes which store well in a cool, dark, dry place. Some sources say for more than 10 years. Isn't that great to know right about now? Nutritional value and germination rate does decrease over time though. They are maintained in this state until conditions are right to grow by, comp by compounds such as phytic acid, which is also the reason that worms don't eat seeds that are lying in the ground. Isn't God's design so amazing? Soak, chick soak one cup of chickpeas for 12 hours, then rinse two to three times a day for two days till the tails poke out and they have doubled in size. So your dry chickpeas, so they actually double in size from this. So these have been soaked for 12 hours and then left to um, sprout and rinsed. I use these big preserving jars with a mesh lid, but it's just as easy to, so uh, to sprout in a sieve or colander in a bowl. This mimics the conditions in the warm soil. As rain falls and soaks the dormant seed, the phytic acid is rinsed away and the seed begins to sprout. Legumes that are cooked without soaking and rinsing, such as canned beans, still contain the phytic acid. These anti-nutrients cause the wind and discomfort that canned legumes are known for. Chickpeas are high in fibre and a great source of protein and carbohydrates. So to the chickpeas we add four cloves of garlic. Garlic is a potent antiparasitic, antifungal, it lowers cholesterol, lowers BP, boosts the immune system and helps to detoxify the blood. Well, feel free to add more garlic. Then we add, um, today I've made some for you to sample and I've actually used tahini, which is a roasted sesame paste. Um, but I also make um, raw hummus with soaked hemp seeds or sesame seeds raw. So that, um, the um, seeds provide fibre, protein, minerals and the healthy fats. The um, fat in the tahini or um, sesame seeds is what makes the hummus creamy and light as it emulsifies with the water. So then for flavour we add two teaspoons of cumin and salt to taste. And I've forgotten the lemon. Has anyone, <laughs> has anyone noticed that? So we add lemons, and I, um, we didn't have room in our car to bring um, the ingredients up, so I went shopping this morning, and I have to tell you that if you don't have a lemon tree in your yard, you're gonna be very, very sorry, <laughs> because I couldn't find lemons in Rotorua today, and when I finally did, in a little, um, a little fruit and veggie shop, they were $10 a kilo. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah, water and fertilise your lemon tree. So you add two to three, the juice of two to three lemons and blend it till it's light and fluffy. So we're going to pass around a um, taster now and I hope that you enjoy it. Oh, the other thing on top of the taster, I've actually so soaked um, pumpkin seeds, sun sunflower seeds and sesame seeds and um, soaked them and sprouted them and that's called activating and then I've just lightly toasted them in the oven, but you can dehydrate them in a dehydrator so that they are totally raw. Wonderful, hope you enjoy. So while they're being passed around, absolutely delicious, thank you Cherie. While they're being passed around, I just want to talk about some books. Each day we're gonna share some books with you um, that you need to have. This is like the must have. Okay, so, and I know that I was talking to Lena last week and I said, Lena, have you got these books? And she said, absolutely. So you can go and buy these books from Lena, go and see her, uh, get these books. These books are like the, um, the basis of your knowledge when it comes to natural remedies. There's lots and lots of books, okay? There's lots of books out here, but these are just three that we use a lot as our team. So God's Pharmacy, Notice that it's spelt with the F. God's Pharmacy and the Health Training Manual. These two books we use regularly. 
okay? They are simple, they're kind of like the, I don't know, I'd call it like the 101, you know, it's the basic level, it's entry. Even though there's lots and lots of information in it, it's really simple and it's really easy to follow. Whereas if you go, oh no, I know that stuff, I'm going to get right into it, well then these, well, this one down here, the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia is the one for you. It's a big, thick book, it's about this big, and I know Lena said, if you want to order it, go and see her. Okay, I think there might only be one or two down there, is that right? Did you, did you know, Doug? The Natural Remedies has been very hard to get. Yeah, she said, I think she said to me today, she can order it. Yeah, they're coming, yep. it's just taken a while. Yep, but go and get your order in if you want to get that one. It's absolutely brilliant. So there are two, three books, but then I also just want to bring your attention to these books. And I will say this, if you're happy with status quo, if you're happy with not rocking the boat and you don't want too much change in your life, then don't read these books. Okay? I'm being honest. If you want to change your life, then you want to read that book there, Councils on Diet and Food. It is powerful. Honestly, you'll go to the cupboard and you'll just start throwing everything out and start again. It is a powerful book and it's a reminder of what we already know as Seventh-day Adventists, but for so long put on our back shelf. Okay, so I really encourage you, go and get that book again, go and see Lena. Estelle's already talked about the Ministry of Healing, this is kind of like a must have. Everyone should have one of these books and everyone should have read them. Absolutely inspirational, amazing book. And then there's Councils on Health. Okay, all of these have been written by our prophet, Alan G. White. So I encourage you to get those books and read them, digest them. Don't just read it and gloss over it. Go back and go back and back. Research and study it. Study it so you know it. Brilliant books. Okay, our next letter is E, E4, exercise. Now, Dr. Um, uh, the, Dr. Tim, uh, he did a really good talk on exercise this morning. So just um, in summary, E is for exercise, and regular physical activity is essential for good health. It can improve your muscle strength and boost your endurance. Exercise delivers oxygen and nutrients to your tissues and helps your cardiovascular system work more efficiently. It is recommended that we get 30 to 45 minutes of exercise day, uh, every day, um, alternating with HIIT. Does anyone know what that stands for? High intensity it's interval training. And weights with cardio exercise such as walking, running, swimming and biking. And as we learned this morning, it will extend our lives, won't it? Mm, yeah. Amen. Water, W is for water. Now we're going to, there's, there's two different aspects to water. There's the water internal, and we're going to talk about the internal today. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about the water external, the way that we can use water as uh, a natural remedy, remedy to heal ourselves. And that is through, um, that is through hydrotherapy. So we'll talk that on Friday. Water is essential. It is absolutely essential to our lives. We can't survive without water. Did you know that the brain is 80% water? That our blood is 90% water? And this is why it's so important to drink water. So the key is drink before you're thirsty. How about that? Always drink before you're thirsty. So little sips is a good thing. And Carol's gonna come and talk to us a little bit more about water. So how does water um, help in creating a healthier you. Water is the primary transport agent. Water makes the job of flushing toxins out of the body easier. Water helps keep your liver and kidneys functioning optimally. Your body relies on the liver to pick up the toxins from the bloodstream and convert them into water-soluble substances that can be excreted by the kidneys as urine. This is an everyday process essential to life. Plain water is the crucial ingredient to keep all of our body systems operating. So how much water have you drank today? 
we're just after 2.30 in the afternoon and for the average person we probably should have drunk about two to two and a half litres on a warm day already. How are you doing today? <laughs> are there any substitutes for water? Water is the best liquid possible to cleanse the tissues. Drink some a little time before or after a meal. And that comes from Healthful Living, page 226. Water in its pure form makes no changes when taken into the body. You drink it, it does its job, and it is eliminated, all in the same state. This does not happen with other drinks. Water drunk in the form of soft drinks, tea or coffee, must first be filtered by the kidneys to be able to be utilised in the body. This of course taxes the kidneys, it concentrates the urine and the wastes stagnate creating disease. Further to that there are lots of chemicals in these drinks which put an extra burden on the whole internal digestive system. One example of this is the phosphorus, particularly in the colder, colder drinks. It's high and it upsets our calcium phosphate balance. And that of course causes a deficiency in calcium. And one of the most common diseases that we have, particularly in New Zealand, that's a calcium deficiency is what? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, absolutely. The tannic acid and tea and the caffeine in coffee also stimulate the heart and the vital organs and they overburden the kidney. Fruit juices, as good as you think they are for you, should be taken in moderation as they are very concentrated and high in sugar. They also tax the kidneys. Consider this. Would you wash your clothes in lemonade, or Fanta, or fruit juice? Actually, would you even take a bath in that? We should be just as concerned about the cleanliness of the inside of our bodies as we are about the outside. Water purifies the medium in which our cells live and work, and nothing can replace it. It is said that those that drink plenty of water are less likely to get sick. Water is essential to the healthy functioning of all our cells, tissues and organs, and when consumed on a regular basis, it can ward off illness. So how much water should we be drinking? The optimal amount of water taken in each day is 30 mils per kilo of body weight, with an extra 500 mils per half hour of exercise. So a 60 kilo person doesn't need the same amount of water as what an 85 kilo person does. So for example, 60 by 30 equals 1800 mils or 1.8 litres. And then if we add 500 mils per half hour of exercise, and we did an hour of exercise, that's 2.8 litres of water per day. Some people think that by infusing extra ingredients such as lemon, fruit or vegetables into water, it helps boost its health benefits. This is called detox water and is said to help get rid of the toxins from within your body, to help to improve your energy levels and may even help you lose weight. Nutrition experts are sceptical of these claims though, and while it's not harmful, they say that it has one big benefit, and that may be that it just makes water tasty enough for you to drink. So if you find plain water um, boring, try adding fruits and vegetables to make it more palatable. All you need is a selection of fruit, vegetables or herbs. Simply chop the ingredients and add them to hot or cold water. The more ingredients you use, the stronger the flavour will be. If you're using it as a cold drink, 
leave the water in the fridge for one to 12 hours to allow the flavour to develop. Be sure to remove the ingredients though, as we don't want them to begin to decompose. If you're in a hurry, crushing or bruising your fruit and herbs before using them can help release the flavours more quickly. So why not give it a go? Try lemon and ginger, cucumber and mint, watermelon and mint, orange and lemon, strawberry and basil, lemon and lime, or how about lemon and cayenne pepper? Have you tried lemon and cayenne pepper? I love cayenne pepper, it's great. Okay, S is for sunshine. Now, have we had much sunshine over the last week or two? No, we haven't, have we? Have we? It's been um, quite terrible weather. I, I, I say, I'm just trying to find here it is. It's been terrible weather. Um, does weather affect your mood? It does, doesn't it? So I know that over the last uh, week it has been raining. It's actually where I live in Dannyburg, it hasn't been a consistent rain, it's been a consistent drizzle. Okay, so we kind of just got, I know, and, and Gary laughs, it's not a consistent rain, it's a consistent drizzle. Um, so you could go out, it was warm, you could go out and you'd get saturated in about half an hour, but you wouldn't get saturated in one minute. But God says that sunshine is important. It changes your mood, but it also does something else with the vitamin D in your body. Does anyone know what sunshine does and why we need sunshine on our bodies and how it links with vitamin D? Can anyone give me a quick explanation about that? Yes? Yep, it's to do with um, how it... Did you have something to say? Oh, yes, it might do indeed, absolutely. So let's have a think about the best time to have to get the sunshine on our body. Is now the best time? No, too hot. So when's the best time? First time, first thing in the morning? Yep, and we know that we should be having 20 to 30 minutes of sunshine shining on our bodies and on our organs. Now, if we're talking about detox, exposing those organs that we're trying to detox is really important. Okay, so we want the sunshine at that time on our bodies and not looking directly at the sun either. That's not a good thing. Okay. Come to number T, temperance. Temperance, that's a, that's a very big, large topic, isn't it? Okay, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Proverbs 25 verse 28. So, T is for temperance, and temperance or self-control is the biggest issue in the world today. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Temperance in moderation is good, and obstinance of what? Okay, let's read that again. Temperance in moderation of what's good and abstinence of what's bad. Yes, we need to abstain from all, abstain from alcohol, smoking, coffee, tea, fizzy drink. But have you considered any, have you considered about overplaying, overworking, overeating? What about too much technology? We love our technology. Um, the bit of pleasure they might give is not worth the misery they can cause in the long run. When it comes to food, temperance is vital. Now, Ellen G. White had a vision. She was, um, she was in this vision where she could see that, this, um, actually I'll read it to you, I did put it up. Um, this is in Councils for the Church 101. So I'll read, it, I'll read it to you. Satan gathered the fallen angels together to devise some way of doing the most possible evil to the human family. One proposition after another was made, till finally Satan himself thought of this plan. He would take the fruit of the vine, also wheat, and other things given by God as food, and would convert them into poisons, 
which would ruin man's physical, mental, and moral powers, and so overcome the senses that Satan should have full control. Under the influence of liquor, men would, would be led to commit, um, to commit crimes of all kinds. Through perverted appetite, the world would be made corrupt. By leading men to drink alcohol, Satan would cause them to descend lower and lower in the scale. That, that's pretty hard hitting, isn't it? As um, humans, we don't want to know that caffeine's bad for us. We don't want to know that chocolate and Milo, it's all got caffeine in it. We don't want to stop those things. But it actually does, you know? Um, and it's, it's clouding our minds. And we're preaching to all of us, me included. Okay, another quote I found. Satan is taking the world captive through the use of liquor and tobacco, tea and coffee. The God-given mind, which should be kept clear, is perverted by the use of narcotics. The brain is no longer able to distinguish correctly. The enemy has control. Man has sold his reason for that which makes him mad. He has no sense of what is right. So, in short, the key is, if we are temperate in everything we do, this gives us a good, clean, healthy blood. We know in turn from healthy blood, we get produced healthy cells and tissues and organs, and it keeps our mind clear. So we can connect better with God and distinguish between, the great controversy, between good and evil. And, um, and that's as our sermon was last night. Let's be in good connection with God and can commit to him. A is for ear, and as a principal, I would encourage my staff to take the students out regularly. In fact, I'd encourage, if, there were, if it was possible, to educate outside, to get outside as much as possible. So we would spend the morning doing your reading, writing, maths, your three A's, as it said, and then spend the afternoons outside. We transformed our school into doing a lot of... Um, gardening, a lot of practical things with the hands, a lot of doing things, a lot of learning and a lot of skills. And it was all done in the outside, in the air. You know, a lot of what we do today is inside. We learn inside, we work inside, we're sitting inside, we're listening inside, it's all inside. Air is important and fresh air is more important and even more important and the, fresh air, the freshest air that we can get is this sort of surrounding in the country. And that's where God's called us to be, isn't it? In the country, country living. So God's called us to have the fresh air, to breathe deeply, and that is the best for our bodies. Okay, thank you, Renee. We've come to R for rest. This is another very big topic. R is for rest. Who goes to sleep before 10 o'clock each night? Very good. Before nine o'clock? Yeah, very good. Well done to those who go to bed early. Did you know that between nine and 10 o'clock at night, our brain does a full deep cleanse and partial cleanse between 10 and 12 in, in the evening? This is why it is so important to go to bed early and get up early. Lack of restful sleep is for so many the root of innovation that brings disease. For healing and cleansing to occur, much sleep, much rest and sleep is needed as these actions are only done while we sleep. So our body heals when we sleep. Mm. Our body heals from all the wear and tear during the day. When we rest our bodies, that's when our bodies um, heal, as Dr. Tim was also saying this morning. Rest isn't just adequate sleep. Rest is taking time to relax and unwind. Adequate rest helps the body activate its inner healing cascade and return to a state of homeostasis. Homeostasis is balance, when your body can repair and recover. God designed a regular, rhythmic, weekly time of rest. The Bible says, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Genesis 2 verse 2. Can't we praise God for the Sabbath? Amen. About um, six months ago, my dad had a severe stroke and he has been left um, completely left side affected 
and paralysed. And while uh, he was in hospital for about 10 weeks. And when he first went into hospital, there was, um, he was in a ward of three others, so himself and three others. And there was a lady that would come in and visit her father across from where my dad was. And I would be in visiting my dad every day. And she said, I, I can see that you have a faith. And I said, yeah, we do. We, we believe in God, absolutely. And she said, that's good. Hold on to it and cling to it because it will help your dad heal a lot better. You know, research says that those people who have a faith heal better. Isn't that amazing? Heal better from a faith. We have a faith. We have a faith in the true, one true God. And um, it's through God, it is only through God, it's through God that gives us all the healing, isn't it? Okay, so to finish our session today, Carol and Cherie are going to talk about activated charcoal. Now I know when I used to work at the, air, the emergency rooms, we'd get lots of overdoses, especially the worst one, and people think it's, does, it's not actually that bad, they overdose on paracetamol. Um, so, and what they do, they'd go to the emergency rooms and they'd pump their stomach with charcoal, because it, what it does, it absorbs all the toxins. So in recent years, um, activated charcoal has, has emerged as the latest detoxifying remedy once primarily used in emergency rooms to treat poisonous and overdoses healthy people are now using activated charcoal to detox their bodies and treat a variety of elements so i'll, I'll invite carol and sheree to come up and we'll i still use it in the emergency room all the time wow. there you go there you go absolutely and, and we know that it's really appealing because at this point we can buy it cheap and easy don't know what's going to be happening over the next couple of months so you know it's it quick and easy to take it removes the toxins like we've talked about Sheree and Carol come on up and get yourself sorted and um, you know it's been definitely one of my favorite natural remedies for a very long time and in our family we use it for all sorts of things so thank you Sheree and Carol okay so activated charcoal is known as a universal antidote since, since ancient times to today, we use it in numerous ways to make our lives more healthy. The natural remedy, as we just said, is used in hospitals, healthcare facilities, water treatment facilities, and it is used to purify the air and the soil. It can be made from many different substances, such as wood, corn cobs, rice hulls, peat coal, coconut shells, and also bone. Activated charcoal is carbon that has been treated at extremely high temperatures. This temperature changes its structure and increases its surface area to make it more porous. Charcoal's porous texture has a negative electrical charge, which attracts and binds positively charged molecules, such as toxins and gases and this is known as adsorption. The activated charcoal and toxins do not get absorbed by your gut, but are eliminated through your stools. Activated charcoal is also very effective at reducing flatulence. Mm. <laughs> Did you know that Ellen White um, used charcoal in many different ways to treat bruised hands, indigestion, inflammation, snake and insect bites, poisoning and many more. So what can we use charcoal for today? So we can use it for poisonings and the flatulation to reduce the intestinal gas. Activated charcoal also lowers cholesterol levels. It whitens your teeth. It filters water. You can use it for bad breath. For those snake and insect bites, you can use activated charcoal for a sore throat, stomach upsets, vomiting and diarrhoea. You can use it as a face mask or when someone has overdosed on drugs. And activated charcoal is a great detox for your liver and kidneys. So the liver is one of the organs of elimination and it is responsible for filtering and removing the toxins from our body. 
Sickness and disease results when the liver is struggling to do its job. The liver is unable to filter certain poisons and waste products from the blood. This build-up of toxins poses a major health risk. Activated charcoal taken internally or applied externally is well known to adsorb poisons and support the liver to detoxify the blood. So, does anyone know where their liver is? On the right side, that's right. In the upper um, quadrant, um, you'll find your liver. So um, we're going to get Sheree to come forward and she is going to show you how to make a poultice that you could actually apply to your liver. Now I was, um, at lunchtime, I was over in the um, caravan over there um, just getting the food um, sorted and I was so rapt to hear Pippa, who's up the back. Do you want to come up, Pippa, and tell? She doesn't want to tell. <laughs> But um, Reuben, who has a, is it okay if I tell Pippa? Yes. Um, her son Reuben has um, a nut allergy and he must have eaten something. So his face was starting to flare up and what else? Tickly throat. Tickly throat. And Pippa, who is the most wonderful natural remedy student, said, quick, go and get some charcoal. And um, it's just wonderful to hear that people are using this because this is one of, oh, I've got linseed in my hand, sorry. Um, charcoal is one of the most wonderful natural remedies and I know that um, Renee and I both took charcoal last night. We had um, very tender sore tummies and so we took a couple of capsules of charcoal and a good glug of water and off we went to bed and this morning my tummy is fine. Okay. So charcoal is like a little um, explosion going off if you um, don't treat it with the respect that it deserves. So um, to make a um, poultice, you uh, make a paste of charcoal, so equal, equal quantities of charcoal. So I'm just going to do two spoons, which is actually quite a lot. Now you do have to be careful with the charcoal, because not only does it fly everywhere, but if it gets on your clothes or, any, or in the carpet, it really sticks and it doesn't like to, well it stains really. So equal um, quantities of charcoal and linseed. So the linseeds are thickener, and you can use um, other thickeners as well, but linseed is great. And if you're putting on your skin, the oils and um, linseed are great for your um, skin as well. So um, we mix it to a paste with water. And um, while I mix it, I'm going to ask Renee to come up and talk about how she's used charcoal. She's looking at me going like this, because she doesn't, she can give it, but she can't take it. Usually so. it's me who puts people on the I spot. I know. So I've used charcoal in lots of different things. If I have a sore throat at night, I'll put a charcoal, a tablet, underneath my tongue, I'll go to sleep. Or you could put a, a charcoal just up the top of your gum and, and in, the, in your mouth and go to sleep. Often, nine times out of ten, next day, gone. Sore tummy, like we said, um, great for that. But a few years ago, um, I learned that charcoal is good for bee stings. And I, oh, this is the beginning of the beginning of my journey. And so I, my son is allergic to bees. And one day he came in, Mum, I've, I've got a bee sting, and he's hopping in, and that upset, and he showed me his foot, and I, oh, I know exactly what to do. But you know, in those moments of panic, you go. Oh, brain, brain freeze, was it charcoal or was it cayenne pepper? I couldn't remember. I knew it started with C, but I couldn't remember which one it was. And so I went, don't worry, let's just try the cayenne pepper. <laughs> so, like a good mum, I quickly mixed up a little poultice and put it on the bee sting. And about half an hour later, he was like, mum, it's burning. I went, oh, it's not supposed to burn, I don't think. So we, we quickly put that in some milk. He, my husband had to go down to the shop and buy some milk and to try and neutralise the, uh, the burn. And then I went, don't worry, son. It has to be charcoal. <laughs> so then we tried the charcoal. So for bee stings, spiders, um, anything like that, please try the charcoal. Don't use cayenne pepper. 
And so now, when he has a, a bee sting, he goes and gets it himself. He goes and gets the poultice, like Cherie's making. There's different ways he can make the poultice. He puts it on. Now, he, he's a child that would swell up probably two or three times. So he's had um, stings here on his hand, and his hand was just swollen, red, and hot. You know, you've seen that before for like three or four days, just really, really um, allergic to it. And so when I first used the charcoal, I thought, hmm, it'll be interesting to see if this actually does work. And so I put it on, and it was on his foot. Um, and normally I said, you know, it would swell up really big. Next day, took the poultice off, and there was this tiny pinprick dot where the sting had gone in. That was it. No swelling. Completely gone. I was like, ha! Huh, it works. This is fabulous. And my husband and I were like, this is great. So we use it now all the time. You know, God is amazing. He has given us everything that we need to heal ourselves. What we have to do is know how to do it. And we hope that over the next couple of days that you're going to learn yeah, charcoal, I can use it for all these different things. There's many different things, and we'll talk again what we can, how we use charcoal again uh, for cellulitis. Uh, we'll talk that more tomorrow. There's many things that you can do with charcoal. So, how can we make a poultice? Okay, so... Would you like to make it on me? Yeah, I was going to ask Estelle, but no. Oh, make it on Estelle. No, 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 you're great at um, volunteering. So, um, to do... Um, we're not going to do it on Renee's um, liver, but we will put it um, just here, just... Mm. The liver just pokes out from under the rib cage there, so just there. So um, we do. Um, we use these chucks cloths or any ripped up cotton sheet. That's what I had my little piece of cotton for there before when my eyes started leaking. But the um, charcoal and the linseed has become a bit of a um, slurry paste, and we would just swipe it onto the middle third of the. Chuck's cloth. And we roll a third over. Uh, we actually want it exposed, don't we? We're just going to show it. So it's like that. Yes. And it's a good Plastic idea to bag. moisten the paper towel because it... Um, then it doesn't draw the water out of the um, charcoal so much. And so um, straight on the skin, you can actually put the paste straight on the skin and then bind it. Sorry, Renee, do you want to just hold it like that? And um, trusty glad wrap. Trusty glad wrap wrapped on. Now you'll leave this on um, as long as you can. Overnight is fantastic. And then you take it off and um, ditch the poultice. You don't reuse a charcoal poultice because it draws the toxins into it. So with the remains of this paste here, if you have leftover remains, spoon it into a Ziploc bag. Spoon it in. I'll, I'll show you because it's very, very um, technical. Spoon it in. And if you imagine that you just flatten it out like that so that it's a, a few millimetres wide, put it in the fridge, and then you can just peel off this layer and pop it straight on. Um, it's great for pain relief as well, like on mm. a bee sting or a spider bite. So you can just put that on because it's nice and cold because it's frozen, obviously. Yeah. And, oh, sorry. If you've got a tight one out, um, you can get a tap through if you've got a, a real wound. wound. Yes. Yep. Mm. And of course with any natural remedy we um, pray and ask that God's will to um, heal us will be done. Mm. So with that we're going to finish our session today and we're going to close with the prayer. Cherie would you pray for us? Dear Heavenly Father thank you um, for being with us today and um, giving um, your message to us. Um, we just pray that we will be able to um, change something in our lives. Um, to bring us back to um, good health again. And um, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please come and see us if you have any questions or any comments. Thanks.